This diagram here, as we're going to see, pretty much sums up the description of Tayyamam in the Hanafi school. It does vary from madhab to madhab, but this is how it's performed in the Hanafi school. So conditions for validity, intention is a mental resolve upon the action. So intention is necessary for Tayyamam to be valid, which is different to wudu, where you do not have to have an intention for wudu. So we discussed the scenario of swimming and all of your body parts being washed. That would be sufficient, even though you didn't have the intention. With Tayyamum, you have to have the intention. The time for the intention is when one places his or her hands upon the substance with which one intends to do Tayyamum. That's at the beginning of the Tayyamum process. You make an intention. Number two, one who has a legitimate excuse to perform Tayyamum, such as being a mile from water, though in a city. So you may be in a city, in a populated area, but you do not have access to water. It may be at night time, the shops are closed. You can't really go and knock on people's doors. Even though there is water available in your vicinity, you are unable to access that water and you're a mile away from that water, for example. So it may be available to you, but it's more than a mile away. Or you may be right next to the water source, but it's not accessible to you, as we're going to see in a moment. So that's one reason which permits you to make tiyamu. Number two, illness or severe cold, or one who fears that performing wudu may result in the loss of a limb or may become ill. So in that scenario, you are also permitted to perform tiyamu. And just to note in the past, not everybody had access to warm water like we are blessed to have access to warm water. If you need to take a bath, you would have to go and get water from a water source, such as a well. You may not have the opportunity to warm that water up. Moving on, in the absence of a necessary instrument for obtaining the water, the example given in the past may be a well without a bucket. The person is right next to the water source, but they're unable to extract the water. So that would permit making tamam. Timum should be performed with a pure earthly substance such as soil, stone, and sand, and not upon wood, silver, and gold. It cannot be upon wood, silver, or gold. A way of describing it is something that you cannot burn and which disintegrates. A stone or sand would not melt or burn in the way that wood would burn or silver or gold would melt. So therefore, you would not be able to make tiyamum with a carpet at home by rubbing your hands on the carpet at home. That would not be valid. It would not be valid, I can recall, to make tiyamum on glass unless there was a thick layer of, of dust on the glass, like really thick, and it covers your hand. Likewise, and some scholars have mentioned this, you're unable to make tiyamum upon a wall which has been painted so it says there are stones you may think okay a brick yes a brick by in of itself you're permitted to make the yamun with but if that brick is covered with paint then now there is a barrier between the actual brick and your hand because of that barrier you're not permitted to make the yamun with a wall with bricks which has a coat or a layer of paint and so on and so forth so if you're out and about, then you probably just need to look for some stones or you can do it on the ground. That would be the solution to make him. That all the required area covered with the wiping, and we're going to have a look at what the area is. The number five, one should perform the wiping with the entire hand or the greater part of the hand. Six, to gently strike one's palms on the earth twice, though these strikes may be in one place. It's necessary to strike the hands twice in the process of making tayyamu. There are two integrals of tayyamu. Number one, wiping of the face. So you place your hands as seen in the diagram here. You place your hands on the floor or on the surface where you're going to make tayyamu. So there is the ground or it could be rocks or stones. And then the sunnas are going to come up, but you would some scholars mention if it's sandy area or even if it's not, you just shake your hands off and then you wipe your whole face just as you always wipe the area of the face in wudu, top of the forehead, across the chin, 
side of the face as well. Then it says that second integral tiyamum, so the second strike of your hands, second strike, then you do the hands, strike your hands again, and then you would wipe all of your arms, the arms up to and including the elbows. So just make sure all of your arm is covered, including your hands. Okay, so you wipe, you strike again, shake off the dust, and then you would wipe all of the arms all the way to the fingertips. Now, I mentioned um, in the beginning, now this is the Hanafi school's opinion, you may find some people if they perform tayammum or what they know about tayammum is that you strike your hands and you only wipe your hands. That is in other legal schools as far as I recall. Don't be surprised if you see some people who may have a slightly different understanding of what tayammum is, that's based on differences of opinion of, of, of the scholars. In the Hanifi school, it's the arm all the way up to and including the elbows. Of tiyamum, there are seven sunnahs of tiyamum, the recitation of Basmillah before the uh, commencement. So I say Bismillah before you commence tiyamum, the observance of the order. So you, you wipe your face first, then your arms. To perform the tiyamum uninterruptedly, meaning without any gap in between. To move the hands forwards and backwards when placed upon the soil. So here, this diagram here, you can see at that time you place your hands on the surface and you move it forward and then you move it back on that surface that you're making tiyamum with. To shake off the soil, striking the hands together and to keep the fingers wide open. So that is the process of tiyamum and it may happen in certain scenarios where, for example, you're out and you don't have access to water. Though nowadays, things are much easier in comparison to the past. For example, if you mentioned to make wudu, you could go to a shop and buy a bottle of water and then make wudu. That's one possibility. A petrol pump, which is open at night time, you could go to that petrol pump. Some shops now, when we were growing up, it was unheard of, but shops open 24 hours a day in pretty much many towns across the country now. Whereas in the past, it might have been just restricted to only the cities, if that. So water is, is more widely available now for people to make use of or access.